So in this video we'll get the Z-axis DRO installed and that will pick up off the knee height. Welcome back to the workshop. Welcome back to the workshop and welcome to this ongoing series to make several improvements to this drill press. Uh, in the recent part of the video series we're adding more clearance underneath the chuck by allowing the knee to move a bit further and we're adding a motorised drive system. So in the previous series you saw me change out the gas strut so now that's at 400 newtons instead of 500 and that works a lot better. Um, also you saw me install this much larger 3 newton meter motor and a stepper brake there to stop it back driving when you're drilling or when the machine's off. I also sorted out this mounting system so it runs on these posts now and then you've got little T-slots in there, one each side and then there's a little guide tube down the centre there for the ball screw to go in. Made it so much easier to assemble it and put it together and get it aligned. So in this video we'll get the Z-axis DRO installed and that will pick up off the knee height. Because it's not installed around the back anymore it's going to come off the side and need some custom brackets making. And then we'll also modify this quill guide here which normally sits at the top there needs to have a little relief machined in it so it can clear the gas strut bar there at the back. Now there's still plenty to do on this project so let's get started. Okay so the first job to get done was to machine a relief uh, on the back of the quill plate. That's to allow the bar that holds the gas strut on just to make sure it clears. As you can see, the setup wasn't the stiffest in the world, but you know, it did work. I just took it nice and easy, and luckily it didn't move. And then just at this top edge here, just in case the bar gets a little bit close, I've just rounded that over, just so it will try and persuade it to go past if it ever gets anywhere near. Okay, and then it was time just to reinstall the quill guide. You can see under there where that relief is, clearance for this. So when this table moves up and down, or this bit moves up and down, or if I drop the quill, yeah, plenty of space. All right, that's another job done. All right, next we need to start looking at the digital readout for the Z-axis, which uh, goes onto the knee. And basically it will fit, I'll get it in there. It'll fit down there. Now mounted onto the side piece here, you can see I've already made the upper bracket. I've got a lower one to go, but I need to drill the holes in the right place for that. But it doesn't quite fit because it's touching this bracket here. You know, it was never designed to go there. And that moves backwards and forwards like that. So basically what I've got to do is just take this off and then cut a slot out like that to relieve that. And then that'll still function okay and that'll give me plenty of clearance. I might take that off again to make it easier to put the DRO on, but for now, yeah, plenty of space now. And that goes on the reed heads at the back, so that'll be like that. I think I will take that off again. Just so we can get this uh, DRO sorted out. Okay, so we've got our main bracket there and it's mounted with these M8 screws now. I've had to turn those down on the lathe. I didn't draw them in CAD and they got a bit too close to this block on the DRO. I thought about spacing that out, but then 
you know, the rest of the design downstream might suffer because it would start to get too close to other things. So turning those down was the best option. And then you can see we've got these little M5 set screws, one at each corner, and they're you know the usual thing, just a jacking screw, so we can get this aligned um, to the uh, motion of the knee because it's got a track quite nicely. Uh, so the reed head down here uh, stays within a certain tolerance in there. Okay, and we've got plenty of adjustment, so we can go in and out on those, and, and we can slide backwards and forwards, and we've got the same at the bottom. Now the bottom ones, I haven't drilled those yet, so what we'll do next is we'll get um, a DTI set up on the knee here, and then run it down the back of the DRO body there, that will be accurate enough, I think, and get this lined up so it's in line on the same axis as the knee, and then we can uh, mark out the holes for the bottom bracket, and drill and tap to M8. Okay, I've got the electronics back in again, got it hooked up to the motor and we've got a DTI on the knee and then it's running up and down the back of that DRO scale. Now zero is just here in line with that part there, although it's not easy to see. So let's see what we need. Uh, need this to tighten it. Okay. Okay, go back up again. That looks pretty good. What's going back? Tempted to go with that, it's moving ever so slightly. I wonder if the body is not completely straight. Uh, yeah, that's gone back to zero again here, so it's maybe not completely flat. I think I'm going to call it there and I'll mark those holes. Yeah, through at the bottom now and it's gone back to zero so I'll try not to touch it I'll just mark those holes through there and drill and tap them. Now I'll just use this transfer punch it's got a this round is about the size of that hole and then it's got a sharp hardened point on it so that should mark into that main box section. I quite like using these spiral fluted taps, they push the swarf out of the way and they do a great job in aluminium but on steel I have sometimes had trouble with them um, and so I don't want to risk it on this because if I snap it in that I'm in trouble, I really I haven't got time or the patience probably to uh, remake all that. So we'll go with the straight flute one that's a little bit uh, stronger, plenty of uh, oil on it and that should do the job nicely. To make sure we're straight, use one of my little tap guides.
that's got it. All right, let's get it lined up again and see how we did. Right, let's get the screws back in. them too tight because it looks like it wants to come out ever so slightly so I'll put the grub screws in for that but uh, let's just loosen that off a bit okay we can dial that let's see where that is okay we've got the electronics back in again and uh, let's move it up and down and dial it back in I'm just going to move it up and down here and get this roughly dialed in here and then we'll have to check this face and sort of get it in and out that way correct and then come back and check this face and get it all lined up so it'll be a little bit of toing and froing but here we go so we're on let's say we're on let's come into that yeah we're on zero <laughs> it's wavering around zero about here still I got lucky and put it right back. Well, it's coming out about 0.05. I am going to go with that, so let's tighten that up. Well, I've got a second DTI set up on the edge there. It's not quite planar, but I think it'll be good enough for what we need. Just slightly. Okay, and that's come out at about point two zero zero. Okay. Oops. Got it pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think we'll take that. Right, we'll just make sure these are tight at the top. The bottom, the grub screws are pushed in to make that nice and secure, and then uh, we need to make up the bracket that goes up the back. Okay, we've got the DRO mounted now. The next thing to do is to make a really long bracket that goes up the back there, and that will house two micro switches. They are for the limits, one for the top, one for the bottom, and they'll feed back to the Arduino to stop the movement if it gets too close and trips one of the switches. So I bought this bit of angle aluminium, and you can see I've just started marking it up to length where the hole will be where the other hole needs to be. Uh, I've also offered it up to the machine and it's a nice fit. So let's get this made and then put onto the machine. Okay, let's see if it fits. Should hook over there. Okay. Leave that loose, get the bottom one done.
Okay. Okay, so the idea of this was um, once I got the bracket around here, it would have a little tab on it at the top and bottom, and then this would be somewhere on here. And once I got the position right, I'd drill the two little holes there. And part of the bracket that has a little tab that comes around would touch the micro switch, but I've just tried them and they do have to move quite a long way before they register. And I'm just wondering if that's going to go over. Yeah, the little roller's going to go over that. I mean, it should do with the tab on it at a 45 degree angle. The same at the bottom as well. So I think that's going to work. Okay, I think what we need to do is make up the bracket that joins this to the knee and then we can see what we've got and see where we want to position these. Okay, so this is the plan from a bracket which is going to go between the knee and the reed head and I was going to make this uh, like as a net flat shape, CNC machine it out, 3mm plate and then bend it and you see these little tabs here that were bent round uh, that's round the back, round the back of the reed head there and then those tabs are what would catch on the micro switch as it goes up and down. But uh, I've forgotten about this, but there's actually some holes on the side and that would make it a lot easier just to come across here and pick up on those rather than try and go around the back and get those really accurate. Um, so I think we'll do that, that's the first thing. And the second thing is this is bracket's not super critical. Um, you know, exactly where the holes are. What I'll do, obviously the reed head's got to be picked up in a very critical location, make sure that goes up and down nice and straight. But some of this detail isn't that, that important. So I've just been making this little paper template uh, so that's what it will look like, be folded around there, then those little tabs will be like that. And that's what will, um, when it goes up and down, catch on the micro switch there and for the bottom one down there. And then instead of screwing it into there in the sides, I think I'll come in this side here. There's two M5s by the look of it on the side of the reed head. And then wherever these work out to be, I'll just drill through and they'll pick up on the knee. Now there will have to be some standoff posts to get that distance correct, but uh, We'll get this bracket in place, then measure what they need to be and just turn some it up on the lathe. So I think that's my plan. So I'll just make sure this fits. And then we'll make this out of, I don't know, I was going to do 3mm aluminium, but I think that's going to be tough to get that bend nice around there unless I machine you know, a groove in it of 1mm or something. So I think I'll go a bit thinner, maybe one and a half, something like that. And it'll be a lot easier to bend. There's no real strength required here. Just got to keep that reed head in position. Okay, so it'll go around there. Those are those two M5 holes which are tapped. So I should be able to pick up on those. This will wrap around and then those tabs will be one at the top, one at the bottom like that for the switches that mount here. And that comes down. And it's near the knee, there'll probably be like 10 mil spaces that need to go in here and then it'll be drilled and tapped all the way into there. And that should, that should do it. Anything I've got to watch out for this sticks out ever so slightly, this base. Uh, so I just need to make sure when I mount this, it's maybe away half a millimetre or so. And uh, make sure that misses that and doesn't get caught on it. All right, I think we'll go and make this out of uh, some one and a half mil aluminium and then we'll bring you back. Okay, well I've got it roughed out there. Before I fold up the tabs and bits and pieces, we'll just make sure it's going to fit in these holes. These aren't the actual fixings I'm going to use. Obviously they're far too long, but yeah, it just helps me line it up. Okay, 
Uh, I'm to wonder if maybe this is a little bit too thin. It's pretty flexible. But we'll see, we'll put that fold in there. I'd have to make a special tool, but I could put a swage down the middle. That would really sort it out, but uh, you know, if I was gonna do that, I'd probably make a new one in a thicker gauge, it'd be easier. Anyway, let's fold this up and um, yeah, then we can try it out again. Yeah, as you can see, we've got our bracket roughed out now. Um, I decided to put a return flange on the top as well. Yeah, it might be okay. We'll see how we go. If not, I can use this as the template and make something a bit better. Uh, I've also turned up the space on the lathe, uh, 15 mil to just get that the right distance. Now we've got the reed head over here. So there's a couple of things we've got to get right. One is I need to make sure this bracket doesn't rub against here, and that's not against you know rubbing right there. Uh, so I've got this sort of one, one and a half mil spacer, so that will hold that off just while I assemble it. And then the reed head itself is quite loose and it comes with, that normally comes with this plastic little guide here. And you can see, so that would normally be on there like that. I don't think I can really hold it, but yeah, something like that. And the idea is that uh, these little bits space the reed head off equally about one millimeter off here on both sides. The problem was that this bit would end up being there. And once it's all done up, you need to pull that out and slide it out. But of course, that tab there is over the top for the, that's the micro switch detection tab for the limits. That was in the way. So once it was assembled, there'd be no way of getting this out. Oh, yeah, that's the problem. It doesn't want to stay. And then I'll get one of these. Do you know what? I'm going to get another one of these. I think I've, <laughs> yeah, that's a better way. Oh, back in a minute. So I'll put that in, in there. I'll hold it in place. Then I'll clamp that on there. That gets the right space away from the body. And then I've got this one millimeter spacer here that spaces the bracket off that way so it doesn't rub against the body of this bit here. So we'll get that all clamped and aligned. Like something like that. All right, so I've got it spaced off here using that spacer and the red plastic there to get the head in about the right place. And we'll just finally tighten all the fixings. Let's see what happens, see if it tries to move. That oh, looks okay. All right then, yeah, we're gonna have to bend that out of the way temporarily. Hope it doesn't snap. I'll bend it back. How can we get that out? Okay, all good. And then this one. Clear, clear. All right, I think we got it. Okay, we've got the electronics hooked back up again. And uh, so the motor's now working, the brake is released. And obviously we've got our ZDIO reed head in. And I've checked it and it does clear nicely. And then I've just plugged that in to the DIO out there. So it will only come up on that bottom one because uh, the X and Y aren't plugged in yet. So it should come up on that Z, uh, the lowest one down there. Right, let's move the knee up and see what happens. Okay, here we go, going up. And down. 
All right, looking good. Okay. So one thing I have got to look out for is this cable. Obviously it gets pulled around and it could get caught on there. So I think what I'll do, probably I just have something coming off the wall and loop it around like that. And then it can just go up and down without getting caught. But yeah, we can get onto that a little bit later. Uh, second thing I've noticed, might you do something about it? I'm not sure, let me show you what that is. So I'll just zero the DRO and then tap the actual bracket and you'll see the reading does actually change slightly. I've just zeroed it so you can see the actual value. Moving a little bit, so I'll just tap this. Yeah, yeah 0.01. I mean, it's it's not a lot. Um, I guess I could put a stiffening rib along there or remake it. Now I know the basic concept's going to work. But anyway, it's it's doing what it should as long as I don't touch it. I guess there might be some vibration from the drilling that might bump it around a little bit. Anyway, it's got some basic functionality anyway. Whoa, hold on. That was never going to work, was it? Look how thin that is. So I went ahead and made a new one out of a three millimeter sheet. So that connects the reed head to the DRO and then I made it in two parts. So we've got the main body, which is here. And then I've added this extra bracket, which is the same function as that. That will hit against the top and bottom limits uh, on the micro switches. So I've already got the new one installed. So let's go and fit that extra bracket and then we're done. Okay, so first thing we'll get this out. So that's set the reed head at the correct position. And then this is the limits bracket. You can always bend these a little bit more if we need to, but obviously on the bottom bit, I'm a bit close to the uh, cable there. It will still bend, but it is, yeah, that's a lot stiffer than before. I think it'll be okay. If not, I'll put a rib across there or something like that. All right, I think that's our knee DRO done. Okay, well, there it is all back together. I've got the guards and all the guide pieces, everything nicely tied up out of the way. Uh, so we've still got to put, um, these are little micro switches. So I'm going to make up some little brackets that sit onto this rail at the back here and then I'm going to have it adjustable so I can adjust the top and bottom limits and they'll ride up against there but we'll save that for a future video. Uh, I've also had these a little while now and these are the little lights and still got to put those in so I've got two of those and they look like this. So we've just got the little wiring to the switch there and then uh, got this little gooseneck on them. So you can set them into different positions. Uh, did it say how bright this was? I can't remember, somewhere. Uh, anyway, we'll see how we get on. We've got two of those, and um, I was gonna have those mounted on there like that, on that side, and on that side. And then the original light that was back under here, I'll probably wire that in as well. And then I've got one at the back, and then one each side, so I get plenty of illumination. But that's a little project for a future video. And obviously we still got this little lot to put in a nice little enclosure. So I think what I'm going to do, I was originally going to do it all in one big box and then have the DRO readout at the top, so all in one, and then have that off to the left side of the machine. There's not really going to be a great deal of space to do that. So I think what I'll do, I'll probably make up this enclosure box to go behind the machine. So behind the machine, there's quite a bit of space here. So there's space there all the way back to the wall. Although obviously I've got to watch that, I guess. And then to the other side. So that's an option, have a sort of, wall box there and then have the control unit via some cables underneath the DRO on the left there. So not quite sure yet. Um, I need to lay it all out and just see how much space it's going to take and see what the best option is. Um, one last thing before we go. Uh, I haven't updated this for a while, but uh, when I got to a thousand subscribers a couple of years ago, I just made myself this. Obviously YouTube don't send out cardboard ones. Uh, I think you have to get to 100,000 or something. And uh, yeah, we're past that now, aren't we? 10,000. I mean, technically past 11,000, so we're about 11,700. So 
If you're enjoying this and you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe. Let's see if we can get to 12,000. Who knows what I'll do if we get there. I mean, it's arbitrary anyway, isn't it? Okay, so I think that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Uh, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell, all that kind of stuff. And uh, with that being said, see you next time.